Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from premiumbeat.com. And in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create some animated icons for explainer videos. Thank you for joining us today and welcome to the tutorial. So there are tons of icons that we can design. And you know, of course, we're not gonna be able to cover every icon design inside this tutorial. We're just gonna be creating these two icons, the play button and the computer. But after following this tutorial, you should have a good idea of how to create any icon that you're looking to create. So uh, if you're just starting off in this, what I suggest doing is going to say shutterstock.com and clicking on the icons tab here. And what's great about doing this is that depending on what icon you need to create, we can just look at this entire library of icon designs and we can find what we need to design. So we can scroll down here and as you can see, there's tons of designs on here and we can click on say one of these, uh, you know, galleries here and we can see all these, you know, designs up close. And let's say we want to, you know, create this play button here. You know, we can kind of take a look at these elements and we can recreate it inside of After Effects. So that's what I suggest doing. And you never know, you might find the exact icon that you want. And if you're on a time crunch, you can always just purchase these and put them inside of After Effects. But if you have a little bit of time and you want to learn how to do this, let's go ahead and jump right over to the tutorial. So we're going to go right here into our new composition. I just have a background in here. So let's go here to the top with our tools. And if we click and hold down our left click button, we can see all the different shapes in here and let's grab the rounded rectangle tool. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw out like a box like this and we get this rounded rectangle. If we go here to the top where it says fill, we can click on the color here and we can change it to whatever color we want. I'm gonna change it to white. And if you want a stroke, you can always click on this and you can turn on the solid color. And then of course come in here and change the stroke color, but we don't need to do that. Just letting you guys know that that's up there. And so far we have our rounded rectangle. And then what we need to do is go back to the top here and we need to grab the polygon tool. And we'll just come here and just draw out a perfect polygon. If you hold down shift, it'll basically just be aligned, you know, kind of perfectly. And we want to go down here to the shape layer, open up the polystar one, go into the polystar path, and we want to set the number of points down to three. So now we'll have you know, a triangle and make sure it's selected the polygon and let's go to the transform polystar one and let's set the rotation down to about 90 degrees. And then let's collapse the polystar one properties and let's drag it right underneath our rectangle and then make sure to select uh, content. So neither the uh, shapes are selected and go to add and let's click on merge paths. And what we need to do is open up the merge paths and we need to go to the mode and we need to set it to subtract. And now we kind of cut out the triangle and we can come in here and maybe we can make sure we select our triangle and we can come here, squeeze it and maybe stretch it out and maybe make it a little bit bigger. So this way, you know, we have a more of a defined, uh, you know, play button here. And that looks pretty interesting. Of course, we go to the align tab over here and kind of center things up. And if you don't see the line tab, make sure you go up to window align. So what I suggest doing to kind of keep this organized within the shape layer, go to add and click on group and then select everything uh, except for the group, of course, and just drag everything and put it inside the group. So things will be organized and we can come here, hit enter on our keyboard and we can call this one uh, play button. And we can come back over here, click on add and we can add another group and we'll call this group button uh, maybe slider. And there we go. And then let's go and grab the uh, rectangle tool. And we'll come here and we'll just draw out like a long, thin rectangle. And, you know, maybe we'll put that right inside the slider group there. And we'll go up to the top and we'll also grab the ellipse tool. And what we'll do is we'll click a point and we'll hold down uh, shift and command on a Mac or control and shift on a PC. And we'll draw out a perfect circle from the center of our point. And we click off of this. As you can see, we kind of have kind of like a slider here. And now we kind of have our full play button designed. So let's go ahead and start animating this. Let's grab the ellipse one and just put it in the slider button there. And let's open up the slider tab and let's go into the ellipse one, go into the transform properties. And let's add a keyframe for position and let's go to the end of our animation, which for me, it'll be five seconds. And we'll take the X position here and we'll just draw it, you know, drag it out all the way to the end here. And as you see, we'll kind of have like that nice slider animation there. And if we want, maybe we can continue to the animation all the way to the end and you can always you know, stretch out the keyframe depending on how fast or slow you want the animation to be. 
And we'll talk about animating everything on, and that's what's great about designing the stuff inside of After Effects because you have complete control over what you do. So let's go back in the slider here. Let's go to the rectangle, and let's go into the rectangle path, and let's break the chain for size. Let's add a keyframe for the size, and go back in time here, and let's set the size Y down to zero. So now that'll kind of expand on just like that. And then we can close up the rectangle one, go into the ellipse one, go in the scale properties here. And you know, maybe right here, let's set the scale keyframe there, move that keyframe forward in time, and let's set the scale down to zero. So now we'll have that. And also what I suggest doing is make these like these last keyframes here, easy as keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And we'll do this for the last one here. And we'll go back in the rectangle and we'll make that last keyframe an F9 easy as keyframe as well. So now we have our slider there and let's go into the play button and we can quickly animate that up. Go to the rectangle, rectangle transform, and let's set the scale down. Animate that in there to 0%. And we can start just right at the beginning and move that up. And there we have that. I'm going to get the last keyframe in F9 easy as keyframe. All right. Now that we have this entire layer animated, let's rename it to uh, play button. Perfect. And let's go ahead and just hide this for now. And I'll go ahead and just create a computer. So we take a look over here. You know, the computer is just a few basic shapes. We have just a rounded rectangle that's hollowed out and we have two other rectangles in here. So let's go back in here and let's grab the rounded rectangle tool and let's draw out a rounded rectangle. Perfect. And of course we can go to the line tab and just center these up. And then the first thing I suggest doing is make sure the rectangle one is selected and go up to edit, duplicate. And let's open up the rectangle two, go in the rectangle path one and let's set the roundness down to zero. And let's you know break the chain and let's decrease the size X and Y here kind of proportionally, kind of where we want to have like the hollowed out monitor. And you know that should be okay. Um, and of course, let's go ahead and close this up, put the rectangle tool underneath the rectangle one. Let's go to add. Actually, make sure nothing is selected. Just click on contents, go to add, and we'll click on merge paths. Go in the merge paths one and we'll change this to subtract. So now we kind of have that hollowed out screen and we can continue to work on this. But like I said before, make sure to go to add and add a group. And we can come here and put everything inside this group so we stay organized. And I can call this one monitor frame. And then of course, make sure the shape layer is selected and go, let's go to the rectangle tool and let's draw out like a thick sort of base like this. And then let's draw out a longer skinnier base. And then we go to our selection tool and we can kind of just come here and center that stuff up. All right, awesome. And then if we want to add like a say an actual screen on here, let's go back into the monitor frame and let's just duplicate rectangle two and let's bring this outside here. And we can come here and maybe change the color of this to like, uh, you know, some sort of blue or whatever color that you want. We'll do like a dark blue like that. And we can go into side rectangle three here, go into the fill and we can like, you know, let's say go to like two seconds here. Let's add a keyframe for opacity. And let's set that down to like 20%, maybe 30%. And we'll bring the keyframe forward in time and we'll set the opacity down to 0%. Then we'll kind of actually have a screen display in there. And of course you can build out this monitor and put whatever you want inside this. But let's continue to animate some of these uh, pieces in here. So let's go to the monitor frame and let's go to the transform monitor frame. Let's go to the beginning here and let's add a keyframe for position. Bring that keyframe forward in time, maybe like by a second. Maybe bring the Y coordinate all the way to the top. And you know that will just drop completely in there. Make the last keyframe an easy as keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And we can go here to the rectangle, you know, one here. You know, go to the transform, go into the position, add a keyframe for that. And maybe we can move forward in time and we'll animate it from the side here. And you know, what we, what we need to do here, select both the keyframes, right click the keyframes, click on keyframe assistance and time reverse keyframes. And let's go into rectangle two, go into the transform properties. We'll add a keyframe for position, move that keyframe forward in time. And we'll just drop that one from the bottom. And of course, make these la the last keyframes easy as keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. We'll do that for that one as well. And of course, we can come here and just work on the animation depending on what we want to do. And maybe we'll just bring this in by a touch. All right. And if you just hit U on your keyboard, you'll bring up all the keyframes. So, so far we kind of have this entire thing. And when you're done, make sure to turn on the motion blur by the sides over here and make sure to turn it on at the top. 
And with a little bit of experimentation, we can turn the play button back on, maybe move it back in time, and just hit S on our keyboard to bring up the scale in general, and we can bring it down, and we can just come here and align this up. After a quick render, this is what we have. And like I said at the beginning of the video, you might have to design tons of icons and you can check out libraries like Shutterstock.com to get an idea of what you can create. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more tutorials, please be sure to check out our blog at premiumbeat.com. And if you're in the need for royalty-free music, we have a huge library full of great music for your projects. So if you have the time, I invite you to check us out at premiumbeat.com. And once again, thank you for watching this video. And this has been Joshua Noel from premiumbeat.com. <laughs>